Well, American corporations do have a higher tax burden than corporations anywhere else in the world. If you take federal, state, and local taxes together, the top tax rate comes out to nearly 39 percent. Of course, that's before any deductions and credits. By comparison, let's look at France. It's the second highest, with a rate of nearly 35 percent. German companies could end up paying a little over 30 percent, slightly more than in Japan. Much further down on the list is the United Kingdom, where the top tax rate there is 19 percent. Now let's take a closer look at the Republican plan and what it will mean for U.S. businesses. We are joined by Michael Archbold, the former CEO of GNC and a trustee for the Committee for Economic Development. Hi there, Michael. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, Susan. During the past few decades, corporate and individual taxes in various countries have declined worldwide. Why has there not been a fundamental corporate tax reform in the U.S. since President Reagan? And is the reason purely political, Michael? Well, there's, there's a lot of reasons, and many of them are political, because uh, we're, the different parties are trying to figure out uh, how to actually get along and how to actually pass something that, that means something to the American people. Um, as far as, you know, corporate taxation goes, uh, that's uh, an even tougher one. And as you pointed out, uh, the American corporations are paying amongst the highest taxes, in fact, the highest taxes amongst the OECD countries. Um, and that's changed over the years, because if you go back 30 years ago, uh, the inverse was true. The OECD countries were uh, charging a statutory rate of about 43 percent, and today they're down to 24 percent. So importantly, uh, this change in the corporate tax rate is going to help to make uh, corporate America much more competitive for attracting uh, investments. And so you feel like it's enough to make the U.S. competitive? Absolutely. So I think that what will happen is this reduction in, in corporate tax rates will uh, increase the return on investment for a lot of projects for corporate America. I think the, the question that remains outstanding is what uh, behaviors that will incent beyond that. Will it, in fact, cause corporations to bring back all of that money that uh, is sitting overseas and invest it and ultimately grow? And then by growing, grow the economy, grow jobs, and ultimately, if that can drive tax revenues uh, and ultimately deal with our deficit as well as debt problems, then we'll really have success. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the money overseas. I mean, Apple has $261 billion overseas. Do you think this, uh, this tax cut, you know, 12% for cash, 5% for non-cash, is enough to lure them back? And why was this not done a long time ago? Well, I, I do think it's, it's enough to lure them back uh, now. Um, I think, again, it goes back to your question of uh, getting uh, minds together to agree on a set of changes. I think it's uh, incumbent upon both parties to really come together and work on a truly bipartisan basis. This is something that has been done in the past and really can be done in the future. And if we do that, we can, in fact, bring back a lot of those overseas dollars uh, and investments and ultimately use it to grow the economy, grow jobs, uh, even potentially put some uh, upward pressure on wages, which would be great for the American people. So how does the U.S. plan, let's say, compare to what Canada is doing, Michael? So Canada is, is very different. So comparing the, the U.S. plan to the Canadian taxation is, is almost like comparing the statistics of a baseball player to that of a hockey player. Um, and it, so they're, they're just very, very different. The, the Canadian taxation system has different tax revenues as well as different tax expenditures. Uh, while some would point out that they have lower federal tax rates, they also have a provincial tax, and they also have a goods and services tax. So it, it's very, very different than the U.S. rate, than the, the U.S. regimen. Um, these regimens tend to change very slowly over time. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons uh, why uh, in the U.S. you heard a lot of talk about things like flat tax or GST, but that was too significant a change for us. So, uh, so we're in a situation where we'll use the basic construct that the U.S. has and lower tax rates and hopefully drive the kinds of investment and growth that we're looking for. So what is the counter argument to those who say that the 20 percent uh, rate is really not uh, large enough because when you factor in the deductions, that's really where we are now. 
So it, it, it's interesting. Uh, I think that it's hard to paint all corporations with one brush, and I think many, many corporations uh, pay far in excess uh, of the 20 percent. So I think it goes back to what behaviors this will actually change. If corporations actually get this 20 percent rate and they can improve the return on investments, if they can bring back that money, if they can invest that money and create real growth, that's the big opportunity that, that exists. What do you say, Michael, to those who say that's what makes America so great, that it's such a wealthy country and it has the money to tax the people at 30 percent? Well, it, it, the, Amer the great American experiment continues. Uh, it continues to evolve. I think that this is an important time in the evolution of America, in the evolution of America in an international uh, perspective. I think the opportunity for us to lower our rates, to be much more competitive with the international uh, rates, with the other OECD countries, to be able to attract the kind of investment that we need is really critical. Well, Michael Archibald, thank you so much for your time and your insight.